further questions. As you remember, yesterday some delegations inquired to move their discussions for today, but it has already occurred that now we can proceed according to the list proposed to everyone. So we will start today morning with the uh, discussion of the site from Bahrain. Uh, and I would like to invite Incomos to present the nomination of the Dilmun Burial Mounts. Please, you are welcome, Incomos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The English version of the ECOMOS evaluation for this property is found at page 57, with the French version is at page 202. This is a serial nomination of 21 components comprising thousands of burial mounds, which are characterized by their architectural design, interior arrangement, including the use of alcoves, and the different types indicating the emergency of social hierarchies in Dilmus society. Located in the western part of the island of Bahrain, the Dilmus burial mound were built during the early Dilmun period over five, uh, 450 years, approximately between 2200 before Christian era and 1750 before Christian era. Dilmun burial mounds are categorized in five typological groups, including early type mounds, late type mounds, chief time, chieftain type mounds, royal type mounds, and mounds with subsidiary burials chamber. Early and late type mounds are tumuli placed in close proximity to each other, forming dense cemeteries. They are on average two, three meter high and six to 11 meter wide in diameter. The burial chambers may be L, H, and T shaped. Chieftain mounds are contemporary of late type mounds, but larger, reaching from between 13 to 26 meter in size, and often consist of two story burial chambers. Royal mounds have the same architectural features as the chieftain mounds, but differ in size as the latter can display up to 50 meters in diameter. The link between the terminology and the existence of an actual monarchic dynasty has not been confirmed so far by research. Although in 2017, two of the last kings have been identified in relation to two mounds. Ring mounds are special type mounds with an outer ring wall while mounds with subsidiary burial chambers consist of a central burial chamber and other subsidiary ones. The best examples are located in Janabiya and Madinat Hamad. Some evidence would indicate that these mounds were originally constructed as stone towers, possibly cylindrical. Examples of standing walls support this hypothesis although later evidence suggests that the original shape might have been a terrace building in a form of ziggurat. The series has been nominated as it bears witness to the flourishing of the early Dilmun civilization around second millennium before Christian era. It illustrates globally unique characteristics in relation to amount, density, scale, and construction details. The series also provides archaeological data on the funerary construction and unique information about the development of the society and culture of the early Dilmun people. The state of conservation of the mounds is overall stable, although those already excavated need intervention to be decided on a case-by-case -case assessment. The main affecting factors to the property are development pressures due to lack of land and growing population. The additional information provided in February 2019 clarified the documentation and data storage methodology and informed that the conservation strategy is under development for all burial mounds, covering also information technology documentation and new archaeological license issued procedure. 
Following reception of this additional information, the comparative analysis now justifies consideration of the property for the voltage at least, as well as the selection of the component parts among 14, 15,000 still surviving burial mounds. Integrity and authenticity requirements are met, particularly when considering the two additional sites that are scheduled for being included in the property by 2022 as proposed by the state party. The criteria three and four have been justified. Legal protection is adequate, as well as the management system. The Dilmun Burial Mound Unit has begun to operate. A unified study and documentation of the current state of conservation of each element of the property is needed as a priority. Documentation management needs and risk management are also to be addressed. ECOMOS, therefore, recommends that the Dilbun Memorial Mounds Bahrain be inscribed on the voltage list on the basis of criteria three and four. ECOMOS has also provided some recommendation for consideration by the state party concerning conditions, documentation, monitoring, and particularly the extension planned of the site um, to include Um, Jidr, and Wadi Ashail Mounds Field in the future. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. So we have listened to the proposal of uh, ECOMOS, the file. Now the floor is going to Tunis. Tunisie, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord, au nom de la délégation tunisienne, remercier le centre et les instances consultatives de leur rapport qui rejoint l'idée qu'on se fait de ce dossier qui est extrêmement important. Et je voudrais à ce titre remercier le Bahreïn de nous avoir fourni un dossier de cette qualité. Et ce qui est important, je crois, c'est qu'il vient, ce dossier, opportunément étoffer une période de, sur la liste, une période assez peu présente, en fait, sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. Et je crois que c'est extrêmement important parce que cela corrobore la finalité qu'on a rappelée hier, à savoir la représentativité de cette liste. Je voudrais encore une fois féliciter l'État parti de ce dossier de qualité et dire combien on était heureux euh, par rapport à la communauté des archéologues tunisiens qui avaient participé pendant de longues périodes aux fouilles de ce site. Merci encore. Thank you very much. Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the Center and the Advisory Board for the great report that's been sub, you know, submitted to the committee. I would like to also to, have, uh, to thank the State of Bahrain for the great thing they've done. This is their third site, hopefully will be listed. Yet this small island has been hosting the civilization for several thousand years. And this is an exact example to see how the small nation, small place where can, it can be the heart of several, several civilization over the centuries. And the outcome of all this civilization, definitely we saw it last year in Manama when they hosted this committee meeting, how those people, how this nation, big in heart, yet small in lands, but they have so much to offer, and especially this, this uh, uh, the Dillman burial mounds, it's been so affected in that region. Even in Kuwait, we, have, we see part of this civilization in Kuwait. Once again, congratulations for the great dossier, and thank you for the Bahrain and the government of Bahrain and the people of Bahrain. Thank you very much. Spain, please. Gracias, señor presidente. Queríamos eh, dar las gracias por el informe que se nos ha presentado y felicitar al Estado por haber eh, elaborado esta buena candidatura. Es una candidatura eh, muy bien trabajada que efectivamente responde a un periodo que estaba poco representado en esta lista y que de alguna manera al, al lograr inscribirla y al lograr representar este periodo lo que hace es que nuestra lista adquiera una mayor representatividad y mayor credibilidad. 
Eh, por tanto, quienes, quienes estuvieron en, en, en Bahrein tuvieron la ocasión, el privilegio de poder visitar in situ este sitio y tener ahora mismo una, una posibilidad empírica de poder hablar con propiedad, ¿no? más allá de que el informe nos parece muy bien elaborado. Lo que queríamos, además de felicitar, era animar al Estado parte a que siga con, esta, con este hábito de poner en valor sitios como este y, eh, desde luego, también animarlo a que, a que el Estado de conservación, que tiene un, un gran reto por delante, lo lleve adelante y mantenga este crédito en, en nuestra lista. Estas son estas candidaturas con las que uno se siente satisfecho porque no solo no crean problemas, sino que evidencian el objetivo de este comité. Así es que muchas gracias a los que han elaborado el informe y muchas felicidades a Bahrein. Thank you very much. Spain, China. Thank you, Chair. Uh, China wishes to join uh, the previous speakers uh, to congratulate the, uh, the State Party of Bahrain for the inscription of this uh, in enormously important uh, um, property. Uh, the period of Diemon uh, is one of the oldest ancient civilization in the Middle East, and uh, it uh, fills a blank. Uh, in this regard. Therefore, we congratulate the, the State Party for their efforts in preserving this, uh, this, uh, this property and also uh, making it uh, to show, showing it to the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May I ask uh, committee members, are there any other opinions and objection to the proposed draft? I don't see any. Uh, may I ask the rapporteur, is there any another additional draft to that? We've received no amendments on this draft decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, in this case, I would like to propose you to adopt this document in whole. And I declare the draft decision 43.8b.12 adopted as amended. On behalf of the committee members, I would like to congratulate the State Party, Bahrain, for the inscription of this site. And please, you are welcome to make a floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On behalf of the State Party of Bahrain, I would like to thank everyone that was involved in the preparation and evaluation of this exceptional serial nomination and commend the World Heritage Center on its continuous support and outstanding coordination efforts, as well as ICOMOS, for their intensive and constructive work during the evaluation process. I would also like to convey the appreciation of Her Excellency Sheikh Hamaid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, President of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, to the committee for this decision. This is a very valuable designation to the exceptional testimony the Dilman Burial Mound site's components bear. As you all well know from the 42nd session of the World Heritage Committee, which took place in Bahrain, our country is a small island, but our heritage is rich and extends to over 5,000 years. It is our pride to preserve and promote the diverse strata of cultural heritage we are privileged to accommodate. The Dilman Burial Mound site is the third World Heritage Site in Bahrain. And I hope some of you already had the chance to visit the components of the Dilman Burial Sites during uh, the committee's meeting last year. If not, I warmly invite you to Bahrain to witness our heritage and experience our hospitality. As a final note, Bahrain is thankful to have this recognition and is very much aware of the responsibility it brings along. Following the spirit of the World Heritage Convention, we are keen on keeping our commitment and fulfilling our responsibilities to the international community and future generations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And I would like to give you very interesting information. With this inscription, there are now 1,100 properties in the World Heritage List. <laughs> now we move to the, another question, uh, the item 43.8b.14. And I would like to invite ICOMOS to present the nomination of the Bujbim Cultural Landscape from Australia. 
Before I give the floor to the Secretary, as Mr. Bazama, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. We received a, a fatal error notification concerning the evaluation of Bajbim uh, cultural landscape. And uh, this uh, uh, notification has uh, 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 lots of impact uh, on the uh, proposed statement of OUV that have been uh, uh, agreed between uh, the state party and uh, ECOMOS and that are already integrated in our version. Uh, the factual error notification uh, is on page 20 of the English version of uh, document 8, inf 8 before and on page 24 of the French version of the same document. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandro. Now uh, I would like to invite ICOMOS to make the intervention. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. <clears throat> the Bochbim cultural landscape is situated within the traditional country of the Gunditjmara Aboriginal people in southeastern Australia. It is a serial nomination of three sites, which is also nominated as a cultural landscape. The property comprises the Butchbim Gunditjmara lava flows, which extend over 50 kilometers west and southwards. The area of three components total. 9,935 hectares. The three serial components comprise four different landscape types, recognized by their traditional owners in English translation as forest country, river forest country, sea country, and stone country. The lava flows of Butch Bim, which connect the three property components, provided the basis of a complex Koyang Il agriculture network developed by the Gunditjmara. Over a period of at least 6,600 years, the Gunditjmara created, manipulated, and modified these local hydrological regimes and ecological systems. The highly productive agriculture system provided a six millennia long economic and social base for the Gunditjmara society. The system is composed of constructed channels, weirs, and dams used to contain floodwaters and create holding and growing ponds aimed at confining the eels to a restricted area, allowing them to be kept as live storage for consumption over longer periods. All of the Bajbim cultural landscape is Aborigine owned and or managed, and is managed to respect the customary and legal rights and obligation of the Gunditjmara traditional owners. The Bajbim cultural landscape is a result of a cre creational process narrated by the Gunditjmara as a deep time story. For the Gunditjmara, deep time refers to the idea that they have always been there. The interrelationship is evidenced in the agricultural system itself and in the interrelated geological, hydrological, and economic systems. From an archaeological perspective, Deep time here refers to a period of at least 30,000 years that Aboriginal people have lived in the Bujbim cultural landscape. The continuity of the cultural and environmental system is documented through present day Gunditjmara cultural knowledge, practices, and material culture. ICOMOS considers that the property demonstrates criteria three and five. It has a high degree of authenticity and the condition of integrity is satisfactory. While the site boundaries and conservation efforts are fully appropriate, protection at highest national level will occur at the moment of inscription by the World Heritage Committee. ICOMOS recommends to also reflect this new legal status through recognition on the National Heritage List. ICOMOS hence recommends the inscription of the Butchbim cultural landscape under criteria three and five. ICOMOS further recommends to continue surveys on cultural heritage features located outside the property boundaries to harmonize the site's new legal status through recognition on the National Heritage List and to finalize the property-specific strategic management framework, including indicators for monitoring. Please note that the factual errors indicated by the state parties impacted the draft statement of outstanding universal value and a revised draft statement of OUV has been prepared by ICOMOS in consultation with the state party. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to apply to the committee members. I can see Hungary, please. Let them leave. Thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Hungary would like to thank to the State Party for the excellent nomination file, as well as to the advisory body for the comprehensive assessment provided. It has now been quite a long time ago when the World Heritage community realized that having the outstanding universal value in a property is only the starting point for the long-term preservation of our shared heritage. An equally crucial issue, especially for the future of the World Heritage Sites, is proper management that is extremely difficult in case of cultural landscapes, where probably the largest number of stakeholders should be involved in the planning and day-to-day -day implementation of the agreed measures. Now we have an example of a perfectly managed site on our table with an excellent and effective management system in place, demonstrating, among others, but first of all, the full engagement of Aboriginal people at all management levels. In case of a positive decision of the Distinguished World Heritage Committee, Hungary will be delighted to welcome Bujbim in the family of cultural landscapes, uh, as well as in the entire World Heritage family as its 1,101st member. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I would like to also to thank the Center and the Advisory Board for this great addition to the list, the 1,101, hopefully. I would like to also to thank the, 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 peop, the State Party of uh, Australia. They've been working so hard in all different dossiers from all different countries. It's time for relief for them to enjoy the moment for their uh, inscription. Once again, a great addition to the list, I think, and it's a, a great recognition for the people of Australia, and congratulations. Thank you very much. China, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, China is uh, uh, very pleased to uh, join the, the colleagues in, in congratulating the State Party of Australia. Uh, and uh, we also commend the wonderful work of uh, the advisory bodies and the World Heritage Center for uh, for, nominate, for, for uh, giving the advice on this particular property. Uh, this property represents an important, uh, uh, important testimony of uh, the Aboriginal, uh, Aboriginal's uh, traditional culture and civilization, representing their, demonstrating their unique understanding of nature and uh, their view on sustainable development. We congratulate the State Party of Australia for this nomination. Thank you, and we support the conclusion. Thank you very much, Spain, please. Sí, gracias, Presidente. La delegación española está muy feliz con esta candidatura. Realmente es una candidatura que lo tiene todo. Eh, está estupendamente elaborada, eh, se documenta muy bien la relación que tiene el patrimonio material con inmaterial, eh, llena un vacío en la lista, eh, el tema de la diversidad, el tema del respeto a los derechos humanos. No podemos olvidar que es un sitio que además está gestionado por la propia comunidad, que además se respeta el derecho consuetudinario y está muy bien presentado, muy bien justificado y es una candidatura estupenda. Felicidades, Australia, por este maravilloso expediente. Thank you very much. Norway, please. Thank you, Chair. Norway warmly welcomes this exemplary nomination file from the distinguished colleagues from Australia, uh, showing us that uh, there's an unbroken line of 6,600 years of interaction between man and nature. Uh, we also take great interest in the legal protection of this, really taking into account the provisions of uh, the operational guidelines para 104, and it would be interesting to learn more from the State Party at some point on how this actually works, as that is exemplary as well. So we wish to congratulate uh, with a very well-prepared nomination file and would welcome this on the World Heritage List. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Azerbaijan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My delegation also joins the previous speakers in congratulating the State Party for this successful nomination. The Bujbim cultural landscape, landscape contains one of the world's oldest and most extensive aquaculture systems. It, is, it bears the exceptional testimony to the cultural traditions, knowledge, practices, and ingenuity of the indigenous population. Their aquaculture practice have been shown to reach back at least 6,600 years and continue to be used today. In that sense, we uh, congratulate 
the state party and also the ECOMOS for this uh, exceptional work. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I apply to the committee members uh, whether there are any other opinions and objections to the proposed draft? I don't see any. Uh, did we receive anything uh, additional? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There were no amendments to this draft decision. Thank you. Thank you. So as soon it is clear, uh, I would like to approve the document in whole. And therefore, I declare draft decision 43, com 8B.14 adopted as amended. Our congratulations on behalf of the committee members to the Honourable State Party for the inscription of this site, and I'm giving floor to the State Party. Australia, you're welcome. Uh, wow, what an experience, Mr Chairman. Um, here we are, surrounded by Gunditjmara traditional owners. In the deep time Indigenous people have inhabited, inhabited Australia, a day is but a flicker in history. But today burns bright and will be remembered as we inscribe Australia's first world heritage property exclusively for its Indigenous cultural values. It is a symbol of and a step towards the healing of our history. The Bajbim cultural landscape is the ingenious creation of the Gunditjmara people. This is their nomination. I present Dennis Rose, Gunditjmara traditional owner, to speak on behalf of the Gunditjmara people. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank the uh the committee and the centre uh, to, for us to get to this stage. It's been a long, long journey. I'd uh, like to acknowledge our Gunditjmara ancestors who've, who have led the way for us. Uh, we know that they're still here with us uh, and uh, the, uh, their, their ingenuity still shows in the uh, aquaculture systems that are still operational to this day. Um, we've certainly, uh, with the aquaculture systems, uh, we have a, a, lot of, a lot of support uh, over the years, um, both government, NGOs and, and, and other, other uh, educational institutions, for example. We've had a lot of support. We, uh, we've always acknowledged that we can't do all the jobs ourselves. We don't have the expertise or the resources to do them, so we've had to rely heavily on our partners. But most importantly, it's the people behind me that, that lead the way. Uh, we've got a lot of young people here talking about management before with a few of our budge bim rangers. Uh, I know that looking after this country and sharing this country is in safe and great hands with our community. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Ken. Thank you, Meg. And thank you, Maya. <laughs> Thank you very much, and we once more would like to congratulate the Australian delegation for the inscription, and we are ready to proceed to another file. Please, thank you very much. Can you proceed to the places? We now move to item 15, and uh, it is the nomination from China, archaeological ruins of Lianzhu city. Uh, I would like to give the floor to Alessandro Balsamo to give comments and then to ICOMOS to present the file, please. Thank you, Chair. We received the uh, notification of factual error concerning the evaluation of the nomination of the archaeological ruins of Liangchu City, and it's to be found on page 58 of the English version of document INF 8 before and on page 63 of the French version of the same document. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Ecomos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. The nominated property includes the archaeological remains of Liangzhu, Liangzhu City, which was once the center of power and belief of an early regional state in the U lower reaches of the Yangtze River in late Neolithic China. 
Located at the earthen foothills of the Tian Mu Mountains in a plain crisscrossed by a network of rivers, the nominated property consists of four component parts. Yao Shan site, the high dam at, at the mouth of the valley, the low dam on the plain, and the city site. The area of Yao Shan site is located on top of a hill outside the city, and its location and is the location where hundreds of objects including the artifacts, have been excavated. It contains the Yaoshan Altar, a sacrificial site, and the Yaoshan Cemetery, with two rows of tombs. The area of the high dam at the mouth of the valley consists of six artificial dam sites and a series of natural ridges and peaks associated with them. And perhaps we could move one slide on because we are one slide behind the text. Thank you very much. These dams are believed to have been built between 3,100 and 2,850 before the Christian era and weren't used until 2,600 BCE. The area of the low dam on the plain is located to the north and west of the city site and consists of four artificial dams which form a water storage system with a length of approximately 2.4 kilometers, while the causeway in front of the mountains is composed of, a com of composite dams extending over five kilometers. The area of the city site is composed of the palace area, inner city, outer city, and a series of socially graded cemeteries. According to the latest analysis of carbon-14 dating, Liangzhu city was built and occupied between 3,300 and 2,300 BCE and abandoned by approximately 2,100 BCE. The archaeological ruins of Liangzhu city reveal an early regional state with rice cultivating agriculture at its economic base and the excavated objects represented by a series of jade artifacts symbolize a unified belief system. The property represents the remarkable contribution made by the Yangtze River Basin to the origins of Chinese civilization. ICOMOS considers that the property demonstrates criteria three and four and meets the qualifying conditions of authenticity and integrity. While the boundaries are adequate, ICOMOS considers that the protection and conservation that protection, management, and conservation are acceptable. However, these offer further opportunities for future improvement. ICOMOS therefore recommends that the archaeological ruins of Liang Liangzhu City, China, be inscribed on the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria three and four, with the additional recommendations to complete listing of all component sites as national protection priority sites to complete the management plan, including cautiously regulate visitor numbers and access strategies to update monitoring indicators and to develop HIAs for any current and future development proposals. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, may I now apply to uh, honorable members of the committee for the comments? Uganda, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the Ugandan delegation thanks both the Centre and ECOMOS for the concise report and recommendation of the nomination for inscription of the archaeological ruins of Lianzu City. We further congratulate the State Party of the People's Republic of China on the successful nomination for inscription of the site. Uganda supports the draft decision. I thank you. Thank you very much. Australia, please. Thank you, Chair. Australia sincerely congratulates China on this nomination. The property certainly bears exceptional testimony to an early urban society and one based on rice cultivation. The nomination was beautifully presented, especially in the description of the archaeological evidence. And we note in particular the extraordinary preservation of organic remains, especially those of the water system on the picture now and even down to the charred rice in the storage areas. The rich array of artefacts was truly astounding, especially the jade. 
This is an extremely important archaeological site in a global sense. It makes an important contribution to balancing the regional representation of the Neolithic period of human history on the World Heritage List, and we very warmly welcome it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Norway, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Norway congratulates, congratulates China for this paramount contribution to the World Heritage List. Junehi, China. The archaeological ruins of Liangzhou, Liangzhou gives uh, city gives us insight into the origins of Chinese civilizations. The four components of the site together stands as impressive testimony of this early civilization with its city planning and societal structure, evidence of a religious system, and the traces from the civilization's economic base and rice cultivation. Mr. Chair, Norway is confident that China will manage this new, this new World Heritage Site that is in their care wisely. We wish them great success with regard to handling the issues they may face, be it from tourism or new development projects. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Tanzania, please. Thank you, Chair. Tanzania goes along with the previous speakers to commend the advisory bodies and all those who were involved in the preparation and evaluation of this special property on this planet. Tanzania congratulates China and her people on this successful, wonderful nomination. Thank you. Thank you very much. Azerbaijan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Azerbaijan sincerely congratulates the China for this uh, successful nomination. It represents the remarkable contributions made by the Yangtze River Basin to the origins of the Chinese civilization. Its typical approach in ancient China to highlight the socially graded order and power in urban planning. It reflects urban and architectural features created by the people in wetland environment. It's a supreme achievement of prehistoric rice cultivating civilization of China and East Asia over 5,000 years ago. We would like to commend the state party and uh, ECOMOS for this uh, exemplary work. Thank you. Thank you very much. St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, St. Kitts and Nevis commends the State Party of China for the submission of this nomination uh, of this outstanding site and fully supports its inscription in the list of World Heritage sites around the world. We are confident that China will manage the site well for the people of China and for the entire world. Congratulations, China, and thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Tunisie se joint à tous les orateurs précédents pour féliciter la Chine pour avoir présenté un dossier de cette grande qualité. Pour ne pas me répéter, je, je rejoins les prédécesseurs dans ce qu'ils apprécient dans l'aspect important sur le plan culturel, mais je voudrais souligner qu'à nos yeux, ce dossier a aussi revêt pour les centres d'intérêt de l'UNESCO, un autre élément additionnel, celui de donner un élément important dans notre connaissance scientifique et historique sur le mode de vie, le mode d'organisation de ces euh, sociétés de, du néolithique. Je crois que c'est précieux autant sur le plan culturel que du progrès de notre connaissance scientifique de cette euh, période reculée. Merci encore une fois à la Chine de nous avoir donné cette occasion. Thank you very much. Burkina Faso, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma délégation fait écho également pour féliciter l'État parti de la Chine pour ce bien et pour tout le travail mené pour le proposer sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. Le site de Liangsou est une contribution, comme l'a déjà exprimé bien d'autres, très remarquable aux origines des peuples de la Chine et également pour l'histoire de cette partie du monde. C'est pourquoi le Burkina Faso remercie le Centre et l'ICOMOS qui ont accompagné l'État parti dans la préparation de ce dossier et sa proposition pour son inscription sur la liste du patrimoine mondial. De ce fait, nous appuyons également cette proposition d'inscription. Je vous remercie. Thank you very much. Uh, Zimbabwe, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Zimbabwe would like to commend the state part of the People's Republic of China 
for nominating the archaeological ruins of uh, Lianjun City on the World Heritage List. The property testifies to the presence of a regional state uh, from the third uh, century BC. We note with uh, satisfaction the level of detail in the nomination of this Neolithic uh, property, which has undergone research since 1936. We therefore congratulate the State Party and concur with the advisory body and uh, World Heritage Center see decision to inscribe the property on the World Heritage List. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Brazil. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a very brief intervention just to congratulate China for the presentation of this uh, wonderful uh, site, which dates from 3,300 years before Christ. We believe the site offers to this uh, committee a uh, remarkable example of outstanding universal value. So once again, I would like to extend to China our uh, strong uh, uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Uh, may I ask uh, honorable members of the committee whether there are other opinions and uh, proposals concerning this file? I don't see any. May I ask the rapporteur whether there are additions? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We've received no amendments for this proposed decision. As soon as I don't see any other version, uh, I would like to propose to adopt this document in whole. No objections. Therefore, I declare the draft decision 43.8b.15 adopted. <laughs> On behalf of the committee members, let me congratulate the Chinese delegation with this inscription and you are welcome the floor is yours thank you chair we wish to extend our heartfelt appreciation and thanks to the world heritage center and icmos the entire committee and the international and domestic uh, experts for the pre for the pre uh, precious support advice and help during the nomination process. We are proud that after 25 years of preparation, our efforts have finally led to the successful inscription of this ex exceptionally important property, which is the most concrete testimony of 5,000 years of Chinese civilization. We are keenly aware that the, the inscription also entails an enormous responsibility for conserving this heritage of humanity. Now I would like to invite Mr. Liu Yuzhu, Administrator of National Administration of Cultural Heritage, and also Mr. Zhou Jiangyong, Secretary of CPC Hangzhou Committee, to take the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The two groups are the most important part of the 20th century. 是见证中华五千年文明的重要文化遗迹。今天成功列入了世界遗产名录，我仅代表中国政府对世界遗产委员会给予该项目的评价和认可，表示衷心的感谢。对不计五一子理事会专业严谨的评估工作表示由衷的
。周江勇先生代表良渚人民表达一下此刻的心情，谢谢。感谢主席先生和各位专家对杭州的信任和厚爱。良渚古城遗址是实证中华五千年文明史的一个圣地。这不仅是中华民族的文化瑰宝，也是全人类共同的文化遗产。生意成功既是崇高荣誉，更是重大责任。我们将严格遵守公约，以世界的眼光、科学的精神，把这一厚重的文化遗产保护好、传承好、利用好。早在十三世纪，意大利著名旅行家马可·波罗就赞誉杭州是世界上最美丽、华贵之天成。今天的杭州不仅拥有了西湖、大运河、梁祝等三处世界遗产，还诞生了阿里巴巴等一批世界的著名企业，正在全力建设数字化国际名城。我们热情邀请世界各地朋友前来旅游度假、休闲观光、投资置业，充分感受杭州历史与现实交汇的独特韵味、别样精彩。谢谢大家。Once more, we would like to congratulate the Chinese delegation and the government of China with the inscription of this exceptional site to the World Heritage List. Thank you very much, and we proceed to the next item. The next item is 8B.16. Uh, this is connected with the Jaipur city in Rajasthan, India. First, I give the floor to the Secretariat. Mr. Bazamo, you have now the floor. Thank you, Chair. We received a fatal error notification concerning the evaluation of the uh, Jaipur city, Rajasthan, and is to be found on page 69 uh, of both the English and French version of the document INF 8B4. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ikamos, please present the file. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Chair. The ICOMOS evaluation can be found at page 122 of the English version and page 114 of the French version of document 43COM INF 8B1. Next slide, please. The historic walled city of Jaipur, located in northwestern India's Rajasthan state, was founded in 1727 under the patronage of Sawai Jai Singh II. Unlike other medieval cities in the region, which were typically located on hilly terrain, and those cities evolved organically, Jaipur was situated on a flat plain and was deliberately planned. A walled city, it was developed in a single phase with a grid iron plan inspired by a traditional Hindu system of architecture but reflecting an interchange of ancient Hindu, Mughal, and contemporary Western ideas. Its ordered grid-like structure features broad streets crossing at right angles. The main markets, shops, residences, and temples on the main streets were constructed by the state, thus ensuring uniform facades. And we'll now have just a few images to give you an understanding of the property. Uh, an example of one of the city gates with the wall either side, another city gate, uh, bazaar buildings, part of one of the open spaces, other buildings including an old haveli, interior of one of the havelis, uh, very fine architecture, the city palace and the town hall. Um, ICOMOS considers the comparative analysis justifies consideration of the nominated property for the World Heritage List with regard to an important interchange of ancient Hindu, Mughal and contemporary Western ideas related to town planning and architecture and as an outstanding architectural ensemble. However, it provides no meaningful supporting analysis regarding the values of arts and crafts which are central to the claims made under Criterion 6 and in this instance the comparative analysis is not adequate. 
the property is nominated by the state party on the basis of cultural criteria two, five and six. ICOMOS considers that the property has the potential to meet criterion two and while not proposed by the state party, it also has the potential to meet criterion four. However, criteria five and six have not been demonstrated. In the case of criterion five, the property is not a traditional human settlement as required by the criterion, but is rather an innovative planned city for its time. The attributes identified by the state party reflect only part of the full urban form of the city, in particular excluding um, most of the inner areas of the chowkris or sectors and the associated old havelis or residences. ICOMOS considers that the attributes reflecting the full historic urban form and architecture of the city should be considered for nomination, including these additional features. In this context, ICOMOS considers that the requirements of integrity and authenticity have not been met at this stage. There are substantial integrity issues related to the impacts of development, the poor condition of many parts of the city wall, the in areas of the Chowkris and some of the old Havelis, and the encroachment of open spaces. In the case of authenticity, the materials, substance and techniques need to be confirmed through additional documentation. ICOMOS considers that the protection, conservation and management are not adequate and that the property is threatened. Conservation measures are not adequate to address the whole of this large property with its many attributes. The monitoring system is broadly satisfactory, but another level of detailed implementation is required. There are serious vulnerabilities in the protection of attributes. The previous management system had significant problems and a new enhanced management system does not extend to all attributes, is untested, and there is no established overall interpretation and presentation policy or program for the whole of the nominated property. ICOMOS therefore recommends that the nominated property be deferred in order to allow the state party to address a range of matters. These include developing a clear plan to enhance the state of conservation of the property with regard to development impacts and conservation measures, and to commence implementation of the plan. Completing the detailed heritage inventory for the nominated property covering all attributes. Improving the legal protection to overcome the danger to the property and ensure it is adequate and effective for all attributes. Extending the management system to cover all attributes in the property and demonstrating the enhanced management system is actually effective, well coordinated and has adequate supporting administrative tools and power. Undertaking heritage impact assessment for any current or planned projects which may affect the proposed outstanding universal value. Developing a detailed monitoring program, including more detailed indicators. And lastly, establishing an overall interpretation and presentation policy and program for the nominated property. The draft decision can be found at page 26 of the working document, uh, WHC 1943.8b. Thank you. Thank you very much. May I have the opinion of the committee members? I know that I have the request from the uh, state party. Brazil, please. Before I take the floor, just uh, to clarify, uh, should, shouldn't the state party be given the floor first? Sorry? Just to clarify, should, should the state party be given the floor first, or should, should, should I intervene now? We can, we can give the floor to, to, according to the rules of procedure, it is possible to give the uh, possibility to the state party to make intervention first. We usually we follow the committee members first then, but if the committee members don't mind, I can give. No objections? State party, please. Thank you, Chair. We would like to thank you for allowing this intervention. We appreciate ECOMAS's evaluation. We welcome its acceptance that Jaipur City meets the requirements for nomination of criteria two and four. The non-acceptance of criteria six is a matter of concern. This 
as was pointed out by Kumas, is an 18th century planned living historic city that has for centuries sustained trade, commerce, arts and crafts, and their practitioners. It is not a fortified city, but built at times of peace and guarded by surrounding forts. On integrity, which was raised, the city wall and all of the nine, and I repeat, nine original gates are the most intact and best preserved and conserved amongst the historic cities in India. Despite developmental pressures, the city wall, the inner chokris or squares and havelis of Jaipur city provide coherent evidence to convey the totality of the OUB. We welcome the acknowledgement of authenticity by ECOMOS on all counts barring one, and that count is of material substance and techniques. ECOMOS's contestation that they do not have adequate documentation is not borne out by the documentation that has been provided and the record of major conservation works in the city, including all of the 12 bazaars, specifying the materials such as lime and stone and wash. This is the pink city of India, which are included not only in the dossier, but in additional information as well. We welcome the additional attributes proposed by ICOMOS. They are already a part of the pro property, and we have given a commitment to in inventorize, manage, and monitor all of them, including the inner squares. There is a recognition globally, and in India, of the pioneering urban conservation projects. Let me remind, let me remind that it is UNESCO that bestowed the creative and craft city tag onto Jaipur. All of the six points suggested, pointed out by ICMOS, have been met. They're a part of the documentation that is available. Jaipur, Honorable Chair, is a thriving, pulsating, prosperous city. It is much more than an assortment of a few physical attributes. It's a living, historic city in its urban totality. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for this opportunity. We hope that sets the record right. Thank you very much. Uh, Brazil, please. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at the outset, Brazil would like to praise the, the State Party for presenting this nomination and for ECOMS for its detailed report. Uh, there has been constant call for dialogue between advisory bodies and countries, and in the present case, I'd like to commend ECOMOS for its openness to exchange information with India and receive comprehensive additional information material in advanced stages of the evaluation process. Uh, the reading of the nomination accompanied by additional information of October 2018 and of February 2019, totally more than 2,000 pages, Leaves, leaves no doubt about the technical and financial commitment of the Jaipur administration for ins the inscription of this property. A walled city, idealized, planned, and developed and deployed in the second decade of the 18th century as a trade hub in the Rajasthan Desert. Um, these are very, three very rich uh, documents in content and graphic quality. We have carefully analyzed documents presented, and in our understanding, the additional information provided, submitted, submitted by the State par Party, delves deeper into the nomination dossier, and it fully responds to the issues raised by ECOMOS and gives an account of the inscription of this property on the World Heritage List. Concerning the properties OUV, in terms of the criteria, it seems to us indisputable that it is a unique and original city, an exemplary development in town planning and architecture that demonstrates an amalgamation an important exchange of ideas in the late Indian medieval period, thus meeting criterion two. Uh, it is an outstanding example of a late medieval trade town in, in South Asia, which was later emulated elsewhere and made into a tradition, justifying therefore criterion four. Uh, just Jai Jaipur is also deeply and tangibly associated with long living, uh, long standing living traditions in the form of crafts that have a global recognition and in our view, it meets criteria six. How is my time? Oh, um, maybe I can go back uh, to criteria six when we discuss the draft decision. Uh, in terms of integrity, uh, Mr. Chairman, additional information that was provided 
uh, has proven that the city wall in the Chokrits, uh, the Havelis of Jaipur, though facing developmental pressures, provide coherent evidence to convey the totality of the property's OUV. And in our view, the surviving buildings in the property bear sufficient testimony to the former whole, in line with Annex 3 of the operational guidelines on historic towns. Brazil also considers that the nomination, nominated property meets the requirements of authenticity with regard to qualities such as form and design, use and function, location and setting, intangible heritage and spirit and feeling. The State Party also provided us with compelling explanation on material, substance and techniques, though we can coincide with Dicamus that perhaps additional research would be welcome for future conservation and management strategies. Uh, in light of this, Brazil has submitted a draft amendment proposing the inscription of Jaipur on the World Heritage List. And Mr. President, uh, with regards um, conservation, legal protection, and management, Brazil considers that um, the measures uh, put in place presented are not ideal, but sufficient for inscription on the World Heritage List at this stage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Norway, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for giving Norway the floor. So Jaipur, the pink city of Rajasthan, is a splendid city indeed. There should be no doubt that this city is worth a place on the World Heritage List. And so is also stated by ICOMOS in their evaluation. We agree with the state party in that. ICOMOS has found that Jaipur meets the two criteria namely two and four, and hence fully satisfy the, the requirements to become a World Heritage property. Therefore, our opinion is that it should be no necessity to spend efforts on another expert mission, which is implicated in the process following a deferral. The crucial point is, however, to reach agreement on the justification for the OUE because from the time of inscription onwards, the criteria chosen constitutes the platform for all follow-up work. It is consensus about the criterion two. Norway finds, it, finds ICOMOS arguments for replacing criterion five with criterion four well underpinned. Criterion five, four will encapsulate the values more precise because as an entity, the city represents a type of architectural ensemble which is related to a certain period of time rather than a traditional settlement. Also, criterion four corresponds better to criterion two in this case when focusing on architecture and town planning. Norway look forward to welcoming Jaipur on the World Heritage List on the basis of a shared justification. We encourage the State Party to proceed, reviewing its nomination in that direction. This city deserves the best, meaning no confusion at, at all about what its OUV represents. In conclusion, Norwegian, Norway co-presents an amendment for a referral. We would, however, like to hear if the World Heritage Center and ICOMOS have any comment on our suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, Bahrain, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Bahrain appreciates India's nomination of this important urban site to the World Heritage List. As the evaluation of ICOMOS confirms, and I quote, the comparative analysis justifies consideration of the nominated property for the World Heritage List and the nominated property has the potential to meet criteria two and four. This property will eventually be inscribed on the World Heritage List. We take note of the conservation issues outlined, and we reiterate the need that these are addressed as soon as possible to ensure that authenticity and integrity of the site is maintained. It is to our understanding that the State Party of India has already taken several positive steps in this direction, and we request that they are given the chance to express their established and envisaged efforts to achieve this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Cuba, please. 
Gracias, señor presidente. En realidad, nosotros, eh, cuando solicitamos la palabra, fue porque teníamos dudas con relación a las acciones del Estado parte vinculadas con el Estado de conservación y los atributos del sitio. En realidad, ya se le dio la palabra al Estado parte y para nuestras dudas fueron esclarecidas. Gracias. Thank you very much. Indonesia, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Indonesia would like to support amendment proposed by Brazil to inscribe Jaipur City to the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria 2, 4, and 6. The historic city of Jaipur is one of the medieval cities in Rajasthan, India, which was inspired by Vastu Sastra, traditional Hindu science of architecture. The city demonstrates important interchange of ancient Hindu, Muga, and contemporary Western ideas. In its report, the advisory body approved that the nominated property is directly associated with long-standing arts and craft tradition that characterize the city as the center of artistic excellence throughout its history. The advisory body report also suggests that the nominated property meet the requirement of authenticity in that the property maintain most of its area based traditional trade practices. In terms of integrity, the advisory body note that the city wall exists only in fragments and long stretches of no longer exist. <coughs> it is also noted that the attributes identified by the state party reflect only part of the urban form of the city. However, the state party has provided our delegation with reliable information that show most part of the city wall is still in existence, and more than 400 attributes have been submitted. Up to now, the state party is still conducting inventory process to further identify the attribute. We also recognize the state party has already put in place several, several policies as protective and corrective measure to maintain the outstanding universal value of the property, including to declare no construction zone within the property to remove illegal construction, to initiate city wall conservation project to sort encroachment, and to formulate architectural control guideline. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Azerbaijan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Wall City of Jaipur is city is a city where urban planning structure based on the Western Indian and Mongol urban and architectural tradition. It's a city where the local tradition of trade, craftsmanship, and guilds have successfully continued and the nominated property is an outstanding example of the late medieval trade town in South Asia. Necessary to mention that the World Heritage Site, the astronomical observatory located on the nominated property already. According to the ECOMOS evaluation, that the comparative analysis justifies consideration of the nominated property for the World Heritage List with regard to an important interchange of ancient Hindu, Mughal, and contemporary Western ideas related to town planning and architecture and as an outstanding architectural ensemble. We fully agree with ECOMOS consideration that the nominated property has the potential to represent an important interchange of human values within a cultural area of the world on development in town planning and architecture. We can see this that nominated property of old city of Jaipur has been demonstrated the criteria two, four, and six and should be inscribed on the world heritage list. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jaipur was called the house of the 36 industries, Chattis Karkhanas, for being a historical trade center, principally supported by craft and folk arts, and received international recognition for such tradition that has been passed on through local festivals and fairs and always been embedded in the city's cultural life. It also exhibits an outstanding example of city planning as a response to the topography of the sites, an important human interchange of values. While the nomination received a deferral, deferral 
Yet, the report did not address the very nature of the information which would require in-depth assessment, thorough study, or even major re reconsideration of the boundary, but rather supplementary information and minor requirements, most of which been responded and addressed by the state party. Information and requirements such as the city walls, which mostly exist and contribute to the wholeness of the sites, the inner areas of Chokris and the old Havelis, in addition to the rest of the attributes, had been included to reflect the attributes of the nominated area as a full historic urban form, therefore meeting the integrity of the nomination. As for the authenticity, it has been accepted by the advisory body, except that they cannot confirm the materials, substance, and techniques, and this has been already provided by the, to the advisory body according to the state party. After hearing the analysis of the advisory body and the, state, and the statement of the state party and our distinguished colleague of Brazil, we stand with the amendment of the draft decision to welcome Jaipur and the World Heritage List. Thank you. Thank you very much. Kyrgyzstan, please. Thank you, Chair. First of all, Kyrgyzstan would like to um, uh, give thanks to ECOMOS and advisory bodies for uh, enhancing this nomination and suggesting criterion four. Um, uh, Kyrgyzstan would also like to um, support Brazil's amendment uh, and suggest inscription of city of Jaipur into the World Heritage List, taking into account that criterion under which a property is inscribed uh, build a foundation for further work. Kyrgyzstan would like to uh, uh, would would like to propose that criterion six should be uh, kept uh, because um, Jaipur has demonstrated its living traditions in forms of uh, very profound craftsmanship, including uh, the jewelry making uh, jewelry making out of luck, which is a resinous substance, and many more um, crafts. Uh, Kyrgyzstan also uh, appreciates the commitment of the government of Rajasthan as well as the government of India, which have uh, uh, proclaimed the uh, city of Jaipur as a no-construction no zone to uh, conserve the heritage assets of the city. That is why Kyrgyzstan would like to reiterate that we support amendments suggested by Brazil and we would uh, welcome the inscription of this property into the list. Thank you. Thank you very much. Zimbabwe, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. The Zimbabwe delegation would like to support the proposal uh, made by Brazil to amend the draft uh, decision in 43.8B16 to inscribe Japo City on the World Heritage Site. The advisory bodies have, in their review, noted that the nomination does satisfy two criteria as defined in the operational guidelines of the convention. We note that uh, the advisory bodies are concerned with the protective regime for the nominated property. We are of the opinion that the issues that have been raised by the advisory bodies to do with management and uh, to do with management and conservation of the property can be addressed while the property is already inscribed. We note that uh, in conformity with the para 108 of the operational guidelines in the state party produced a management plan, which in our opinion forms the basis upon which management and conservation initiatives for all other elements of the property can be developed. Uh, once I'm watching, uh, we support uh, the draft uh, uh, amendment made by Brazil. Thank you very much. Uh, Hungary, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Hungary congratulates to India for its huge work under nomination dossier before and also after uh, its uh, presentation and submission to uh, UNESCO. Uh, both proves that uh, uh, Jaipur is uh, one of the most important uh, 
site in India uh, first to be inscribed into the World Heritage uh, List. It uh, serves for it uh, in every respect. Uh, Hungary uh, congratulates also, congratulates also uh, for the comprehensive work of ICOMOS in its uh, uh, evaluation. Uh, there is, a, we can see, a controversy in the meaning uh, of uh, the World Heritage Committee. Uh, more state parties support the inscription, and uh, some of some others uh, would like to give a chance to the state party to uh, enhance uh, the nomination to enhance the property in the conservation and the management uh, process and so on. And also there is a difference regarding uh, the criteria and the basis uh, to be, uh, which can serve, which can give the place and the, and the basis for uh, the um, uh, evaluation of the site. Hungary believes that uh, ICOMOS is right, uh, saying and stating that two criteria, two and four, would be the best for the decision making. Uh, but on the other side, I could see, I could say that also there are some uh, reasons to accept the opinion of, of India to take into account also uh, criteria six. Uh, we appreciate uh, the activities made up to now in enhancing the site, uh, in the demolition of uh, uh, different uh, uh, illegal uh, structures and uh, some others. But uh, uh, generally, uh, Hungary thinks uh, and is the opinion that uh, there should be done some more uh, activities uh, to be uh, 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 was to uh, nominate the site. And uh, so it is the reason that uh, uh, Hungary supports uh, the decision uh, to refer the nomination uh, to the state party. Thank you very Thank much. You. China, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first of all, we wish to uh, 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 express our appreciation to the uh, to ICMOS for their evaluation. Um, this historical, the historic city of Jaipur is known to the world over the uh, world over for its architecture, planning, arts and crafts, and is well recognized for its best practice in the field of urban management and heritage protection. We note that the advisory body has recognized the city has the potential for OUV under criteria two and four. The state party has provided the information on the, base, on the basis for meeting the conditions of integrity and authenticity in the additional information submitted to the advisory body. The state party is committed to the preservation of the OUV and has taken act action on all the six points contained in the ICMOS recommendations. China therefore joins the Brazil as uh, 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 amendment to the draft decision and uh, we wish India the greatest luck. Thank you. Tanzania, please. United Republic of Tanzania commands the State Party of India for presenting this interesting dossier of historical wall of city of Jaipur. Tanzania also congratulates ICOMOS for a comprehensive report related to the nomination of Jaipur. Chair Jaipur is proposed to be inscribed under criteria two, five, and six 
but ECOMOS consider that the nomination property has potential to present important exchange of human value within a cultural area of the world on development in town planning and architecture, hence it has potential to justify criteria too. In addition, ECOMOS consider that nomination property has also potential to meet criteria four. Delegation of Tanzania notes that ECOMOS recommends some measures to be taken by state party to enhance integrity of the property. As for the authenticity, it comments consider that nomination property meets requirements with regard to overall form and design, use and function, location setting, intangible heritage and spirit of feeling. Chair, Tanzania agree with the ECOMOS that development of new tools such as planning, such as plan to enhance the state of conservation of property with regard to development impacts and completion of detailed heritage inventory of the nominated property, to name the few, will enhance the management system of Jaipur. However, Tanzania strongly believe that the inscription of this seat of Jaipur today, the, the, by, inscrip, by inscribing this seat of Jaipur today, the committee will give a strong support and visible encouragement to the state part of India to take those measures to implement the recommendation proposed by Commerce for a successful management and protection of this site. Chair, considering the above, my delegation support the amendments proposed by distinguished de delegate of Brazil to inscribe the seat of Jaipur on the list of heritage list. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Guatemala, please. Gracias, señor presidente. Hemos tenido la oportunidad de revisar la nominación y la evaluación realizada por ICOMOS sobre las circunstancias de los significativos bienes culturales contenidos en la ciudad de Jaipur, de Rajastán propuesto por el Estado parte de India. A través de la documentación integrada en la nominación y los análisis realizados, esta ciudad del siglo XVIII incluye significativas características arquitectónicas, urbanas y culturales, y culturales de la ciudad histórica. Es una ciudad que desde sus orígenes estuvo protegida por un complejo de murallas y que ahora se propone como el límite de la propiedad misma, lo que muestra una coherencia absoluta entre los bienes tangibles que se inscribirían en la lista y los valores culturales vinculados directamente a su creación. También hemos podido apreciar que la ciudad de Jaipur de Rajastán, los espacios urbanos y arquitectónicos a lo largo de la historia se vinculan integralmente con otros aspectos de la cultura y el patrimonio inmaterial de sus habitantes. Se plantea como un espacio configurado a partir de relaciones interculturales. La evaluación del expediente de nominación permite reconocer los valores singulares de esta importante ciudad histórica lo cual es compartido por ICOMOS, quien identifica potencial en los criterios 2 y 4. En la misma evaluación se expresaron varias recomendaciones y hemos escuchado al Estado parte ofreciendo información actualizada sobre los esfuerzos ya emprendidos. Comprendemos que ICOMOS considera necesario fortalecer los sistemas de gestión y las medidas de protección y conservación de los elementos patrimoniales, al tiempo que se recomienda fortalecer, eh, completar un inventario detallado de los bienes que integran el sitio y una serie más de acciones para atender las preocupaciones sobre la preservación del sitio. Por todo lo expresado, Guatemala considera que las mejoras requeridas en cuanto al sistema de gestión y conservación se podrían encaminar por el Estado parte en diálogo y con el acompañamiento de ICOMOS y el Centro de Patrimonio Mundial, tomando en cuenta eh, to los valores históricos y culturales del sitio de sus elementos ya identificados y las características propias de la ciudad antigua eh, eh, presentadas hasta ante este comité, Guatemala apoya la inscripción de la ciudad de Jaipur de, de Rajastán y también sugiere la inclusión de todas las recomendaciones emitidas por el órgano consultivo en la decisión para que sean medidas de acción en un futuro inmediato. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Uganda, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. Jaipur City is a complex, a complex mix of historical, retail, residential, leisure, cultural, and office spaces configured in a rich backdrop of unique 18th century Indo-Aryan town planning traditions. Furthermore, Mr. Chairman, with separate and connected groups of buildings, which together constitute a masterpiece of classical 
Rajapu Mugal Architecture Gem and already in possession of World Heritage property such as Janta Mata Observatory, Jaipur City is a city of forts, palaces, and, and prosperous historic bazaars. Mr. Chairman, whereas time and space cannot allow me to go into deeper details, which have already been mentioned, my delegation wishes to re-echo this rich character that makes the OUVs of Jaipur City resonate as products of spectacular exploitation of artistry, innovation, harmonious interplay of space and enclosure, topography, streetscape, local climate, architectural styles, and social cultural conditions breathed from the local cultural landscapes of the Indian subcontinent. Hence, Mr. Chairman, Uganda supports the amendment by Brazil for inscription of Jaipur City, Rajasthan on the World Heritage List. I thank, thank you very much. Uh, Australia, please. Thank you, Chair. Like the other uh, committee members who have spoken before us, Australia greatly appreciates the very large amount of research that's gone into this nomination and that this work does illustrate the great significance of Jayapur as an important interchange of ancient cultures that resulted in an urban form and an architecture of the city that is an outstanding architectural ensemble. We consider that there is potential for the site to demonstrate OUV under Criterion 2 and Criterion 4. And with the honourable delegates from Norway, Spain and Hungary, we consider that the appropriate decision is to refer the nomination back to the state party to further elaborate the attributes under these criteria and to better demonstrate how the property meets the requirements for authenticity and integrity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier l'ICOMOS et le Centre pour le rapport présenté sur, cette, sur ce dossier. Euh, à écouter l'ensemble des intervenants, nous avons vu que, quelle que soit leur position finale proposée, tout le monde est d'accord pour souligner à l'unanimité cette importance de la ville de Jaipur et le brassage, le fabuleux brassage civilisationnel qu'elle représente sur tant d'aspects. La délégation tunisienne qui a étudié ce, ce dossier euh, bien minutieusement partageait une bonne partie des euh, craintes exprimées, en tous les cas des réserves euh, exprimées euh, par l'instance consultative, notamment sur les questions euh, relatives à, à l'authenticité euh, du bien. Mais la parole donnée à l'État parti et les explications qu'on a entendues, l'engagement ferme qu'on a euh, souligné, lève une bonne partie de ces, de ces réserves à nos yeux et nous permet euh, d'aller rejoindre l'ensemble des délégations qui appuient l'amendement présenté par le Brésil, notamment au vu des précisions données par l'État parti en matière de gestion et de conservation du bien. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much. Uh, Burkina Faso, please. Merci. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ma délégation remercie l'ICOMOS pour l'important travail d'évaluation du dossier d'inscription de la ville de Jaipur. Ce travail qui relève certes des aspects non conformes en matière de conservation, mais aussi mais le, a le mérite de mettre en évidence des avis concordants de l'État parti et de l'ICOMOS. En ce qui concerne l'État parti de l'Inde, pour sa part, la conservation et la gestion de cette ville historique constitue une préoccupation majeure, lui qui a mis en évidence et qui a mis en œuvre un certain nombre d'initiatives et pris également un certain nombre de recommandations de l'ICOMOS en compte. Je voudrais par conséquent demander au comité de considérer les efforts faits par l'État parti dans ce sens et exhorter le comité à reconnaître avec l'ICOMOS le potentiel de valeur de valeur universelle exceptionnelle et je souscris à, au projet d'amendement introduit par le Brésil pour l'inscription du site à cette session. Je vous remercie. 
Thank you very much, and Bosnia. Taking a great explanation of the site and all discussions, and especially uh, presentation of State of India about their commitment to develop this uh, project, we supporting amendment given by Brazil. Thank you very much. So, as far uh, can see, uh, all honourable delegates, uh, Angola, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Nous serons brefs. Nous avons suivi avec attention les explications de l'État parti ainsi que les réserves exprimées par l'ICOMAS, notamment en ce qui concerne le, la question de l'authenticité. L'ICOMAS soulève des réserves en disant que des informations additionnelles doivent être fournies Donc, quand on dit additionnel, c'est-à-dire quelques informations ont été fournies. Et notamment également, certaines réserves par rapport aux questions de gestion et, et, et protection. L'Angola aimerait euh, proposer la suivante. Donc, nous appuyons l'inscription de ces biens sur la liste du patrimoine mondial, tel que proposé par le Brésil avec peut-être une condition, c'est-à-dire demander à l'État parti de se rapprocher de l'ICOMOS et essayer d'établir un calendrier assez cohérent pour pouvoir accélérer donc, la mise en œuvre des recommandations qui ont été émises. Donc voilà la position de l'Angola. Nous soutenons l'inscription avec cette condition. Merci. Thank you. St. Kitts and Nevis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. St. Kitts and Nevis thanks the State Party of India for the submission of this interesting nomination file of Jaipur City, Rajasthan. We note that the walled city was founded in 1727 BC and located on the plains unlike the other hilly counterparts of its time. The urban layout of the city as a mandala remains and the market shops residences and temples located on the main streets are of recognized significance. St. Kitts and Nevis recognizes the concerns raised by ICOMOS on the nominated property associated with the authenticity, integrity, protection, and management, especially with reference to the deterioration of the wall and other aspects of the site. The State Party has indicated its commitments to address these concerns, and we encourage the State Party, in collaboration with ICOMOS, to deal urgently with the issues raised, particularly those regarding plans for conservation of the property and legislative protection. Sengis Nevis, however, supports the amendments by Brazil and, uh, well, Sengis and Nevis therefore so, so supports the amendment by Brazil. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to give the floor to the World Heritage Center. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the delegation of Norway requested a comment from uh, uh, the Secretariat and also from ICOMOS about their proposed amendment uh, to refer the examination of the nomination of Jaipur City. Uh, what we can uh, uh, say as a Secretariat uh, in, from a procedural point of view is that the uh, proposed amendment uh, procedurally uh, follows uh, uh, and complies uh, uh, fully with the paragraph 153 of the operational guidelines that gives the four options uh, to the committee to uh, inscribe, uh, refer, defer, or not to inscribe uh, uh, properties on the list. Uh, and uh, the text of the uh, amendment is fully complies also with uh, uh, paragraph 159 that des uh, describes the procedure for referral and ICOMOS may have other consideration. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. ICOMOS, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, just a, a point of clarification before responding to the Honourable Delegate from Norway's uh, request. Um, just to clarify that uh, 
uh, ICOMOS did receive a, a lot of information uh, during the evaluation process, and this information was very much appreciated and welcomed by, uh, by ICOMOS uh, in that period. Um, but we uh, understand that perhaps additional information has been provided to committee members uh, during the, cu the, current, uh, the current session, uh, and this is perhaps information that uh, we have uh, not had access to and uh, uh, you know, do not have uh, the opportunity to, to uh, uh, evaluate information uh, after 28 February uh, in accordance with the, with the rules. Um, I might just say something briefly about Criterion 6, as that has been uh, a topic for um, uh, comment. And just to clarify that while arts and crafts are part of the historical legacy of Jaipur, and the city has been recognised through the UNESCO Creative Cities Network, um, in Nicomos's view, the nomination dossier did not position the nominated property adequately among other properties that exhibit the same or similar attributes and values related to Criterion 6. Accordingly, the, cri the comparative analysis was not adequate on this aspect. And I should just note that the inclusion in the UNESCO Creative Cities Net Network is very different to the World Heritage List and is not based on an assessment of outstanding universal value. Um, so just to return to the issue of a possible referral, um, um, ICOMOS would see that as being a, uh, a positive development, um, in part because it would enable the state party some further time to enable it to um, undertake uh, additional measures uh, to respond uh, on the ground to the recommendations um, made with regard to uh, protection, conservation and management, and we could uh, then have a better sense of the effectiveness of, uh, of those responses uh, to issues relating to uh, protection, conservation and management of the property. And it would also enable the state party uh, in that period to uh, enhance the understanding of uh, the justification for Criterion 6 to enhance the comparative analysis uh, with regard to uh, the arts and crafts issue. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Spain. Sí, gracias, Presidente. Bueno, yo creo que el panorama está muy claro. Todos los estados, todos los miembros del comité, tenemos claro el valor universal excepcional de este bien. Nuestra delegación, además, conoce bien esta ciudad. Pero es el típico caso de un sitio que tiene que pasar de difer a rifer, porque le quedan una serie de cuestiones que tiene que satisfacer. Entonces, no es una cuestión de que se inscriba a condición de que cumpla una serie de cuestiones, sino que precisamente es un caso en el que tiene un difer, ha cumplido una serie de, 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 de criterios que ha convencido al comité, pero todavía le queda lo que es la cuestión jurídica y el plan de gestión que todavía lo tiene que trabajar. Eh, nuestra delegación estará encantada al año que viene, y seguramente lo hará, que este, que este bien se inscriba, porque estamos convencidos de que la India puede mejorar ese plan de gestión y puede mejorar las cuestiones jurídicas, pero todavía le queda un poquito de camino. Precisamente esta es la figura del RIFER. Es esa. Si pasamos de un, de un DIFER a una inscripción, no le estamos dejando al Estado todavía ese plazo de tiempo que consideramos algunos Estados que le queda. Eh, bueno, esto yo creo que es la, la cuestión que, que, que tenemos que, que tener todos en cuenta. ¿Cuáles son las figuras que nos permite el comité, como ha mencionado la secretaría? ¿La inscripción, el DIFER o el RIFER o la no inscripción? Y aquí creo que estamos precisamente en un caso claro de que tiene que pasar de un DIFER a un RIFER. Muchas gracias, presidente. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, all delegations almost express their positions. Now I would like to give the floor to the rapporteur because we have two different uh, submitted drafts. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we have two sets of amendments. Uh, one proposed by Norway, Australia, Spain and Hungary, uh, which is moving to a referral uh, on the basis of criteria two and four. The other proposed by uh, Brazil, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Burkina Faso, China, Guatemala, Indonesia, St. Kitts and Nevis, uh, and the United Republic of Tanzania and Uganda. And I note a few other uh, delegations also added their support to this one. And that's for an inscription on the basis of criteria two, four, and six. 
Um, so paragraph two would be amended to read, refers the nomination of Jaipur City Rajasthan India on the basis of criteria two and four back to the state party in order to give consideration to the following. And then the former paragraph two would follow that with the um, subparagraphs A to G for the Norway and other countries proposal. For the other uh, Brazil one, it would read, inscribes Jaipur City Rajasthan India on the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria two, four, and six. Uh, then the Brazil and others would therefore need to take note of the provisional statement of outstanding universal value, which has been provided and follows. Then for former paragraph two um, would be amended by the Brazil and uh, group of countries to read strongly recommends that the state party give consideration to the following. A, develop the special area heritage plan under Jaipur Master Plan 2025 to enhance, etc. as you can see. Uh, B, remains unchanged. C, improve the legal protection by introducing architectural control guidelines to overcome the potential dangers to the property and ensure it is adequate and effective for all attributes, including ensuring coordination between the various protective measures through the heritage committees proposed in the management framework. Um, and then just scrolling, D, E, F and G are unchanged. Uh, the both both um, sets of amendments would uh, review, uh, sorry, remove the requirement for the expert mission. And then the final paragraph proposed by Brazil and others, request the state party to submit to the World Heritage Centre by 1 December 2021 a report on the implementation of the above mentioned recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, so can we uh, come to the beginning of the text? Uh, the two approaches are different from each other from the point of view not only of the decision but from the uh, approval of the uh, Criteria. Uh, maybe we will clarify the criteria, criteria first. So, uh, Brazil, please. Doesn't work. Yes, it is. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, um, the with regards to criteria six. Um, I'd like to say that one c can simply not fully understand the property without taking into account the traditional crafts uh, of Jaipur. The city housed um, a number of uh, karhanas, I don't know how to pronounce that, but uh, 11 out of 13 original ones continue to thrive, uh, each with a specified street and market designed for each craft, and that still continues to date. And in the additional information, uh, as was requested from, uh, by ECOMOS, the comparative analysis was expanded uh, based on the typologies and handicraft cities in four other uh, World Heritage sites. They compared with India, with China, with Iran, and it was concluded that the introduction of uh, handicrafts and diver diversified techniques in Jaipur in the 18th century uh, has led to the establishment of distinct identity compared to other cities. And in Jaipur, traditional crafts uh, are seen not only as economic asset, but have contributed more broadly to a process of construction and reconstruction of territorial identities in the city. Um, in sum, Mr. Chairman, um, the, these uh, crafts, which are of global recognition, they are tangibly manifested in the property. One can simply not fully understand the property without taking into account the, this dimension. Therefore, we would insist in having criteria six uh, taken into account whether we're referring or inscribing the property. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there principal objections to such kind of approach from the committee members? So I don't see. I don't see any objections. Thank you very much. Now we have to proceed to the uh, approval of the decision in itself. So uh, most of the countries, as far as I see, uh, voted for the addition proposed by Brazil. The number of the country 
14. Uh, five countries are favor for referral. So uh, I don't want to put it to the other matters, so the difference is quite uh, strong. Can we then, if there is no objections, principal objections from the side of these countries which uh, propose the alternative draft, can we proceed to approval of the matter? Then we have to put the yes. Rapporteur, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, just for paragraph two, it would read: um, inscribes Jaipur City, Rajasthan, India, on the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria two, four, and six. No objections. Australia, please. Thank you, Chair. We're happy to go with the decision. We'd just like to make or propose one further amendment to the final paragraph five in the, in the amendments to scribe. That, uh, given there seems to be quite a significant number of things that the par state party has to do to satisfy the state of conservation, authenticity, integrity that we would like them to submit to the World Heritage Centre by December 2020, 2020 rather than 2021. Correct. I think it's reasonable. Ecomos, please. Ecomos, please. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, just a uh, suggestion that the committee may wish to consider is whether um, that final paragraph uh, should indeed have a submitting a report to the World Heritage Centre by uh, the new revised date um, uh, on the implementation of the above mentioned recommendations, but for examination by the World Heritage Committee, um, perhaps at its session in 2021 would be a worthwhile addition to consider. Okay, uh, Australia, please, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair, we would certainly uh, support that suggestion uh, from, from Ikamos. Ikamos. Thank you. Hungary, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, we wanted to, to propose what was just um, suggested by Ikamos. But since we're taking the floor, um, whichever way the committee seems to wish to proceed, we just want to state for the record that the operational guidelines set out the conditions for inscription on the World Heritage List. Mm -hmm. And after some comments that we have heard, we wish to remind all of us that simply meeting criteria is not enough to warrant the inscription, as it is clearly stated in paragraph 78 of the operational guidelines, to be deemed of outstanding universal value, a property must also meet the conditions of integrity and authenticity and must have an adequate protection and management system to ensure its safeguarding. This shows that OUV has three pillars, all of which need to be met. Thank you. Thank you. Norway. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I mean, we have seen now uh, there is a movement towards inscription and uh, we would not oppose it. And we. Uh, are in agreement with the delegates from Australia with the addition. And I would also like to point out that in our amendment, we also had the list uh, of recommendations from Brazil, but we had an addition on the point C that we would like to have inserted. Um, improve the legal protection, and there we would have including if that's okay with the committee. I don't see any objections. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're approaching to the uh, stage of approval of the document in whole.
with the new version of the draft decision. Angola, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. On va au paragraphe 5, en fait. Je... OK, donc, comme nous l'avons souligné, donc, nous avons appuyé l'inscription en regardant justement à ce calendrier. Nous sommes tout à fait d'accord avec euh, la proposition de l'Australie et, et, et de la Hongrie. Donc, 2020, pour, euh, pour être beaucoup plus incisif sur euh, la mise en œuvre des recommandations. Ensuite, euh, l'amendement qui vient d'être proposé par la Norvège, il y a juste un, une question de formulation qui n'est pas assez assez précise, voilà. y compris en approuvant, donc ça ne marche pas, peut-être y compris des directives, si, 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 si c'est clair comme ça, je pense. Voilà, si on peut enlever en approuvant ou en promouvant. Merci, monsieur le président. Thank you. Uh, in the English, then, I think the suggestion would be to remove by introducing. So it would read, improves the legal protection, including, perhaps to include architectural control guidelines to overcome. And we remove introducing in both. Thank you. So, Ecomos. Um, sorry, just to comment on the rapporteur's uh, intervention then, I think um, by introducing narrows the intent of using the word including. I mean, including is intended to um, highlight one aspect where um, legal protection will be uh, enhanced, but uh, um, to use the words by introducing narrows it down to just that one aspect, uh, which I think would be um, not... Uh, not a beneficial outcome. Thank you. Norway. Yes, just like Eikermas just said, um, uh, it, it narrows it down. We wanted to broaden it. So, so we would, even, even if it's not the perfect sentence, we want to keep the original if there's no other suggestion for keeping the meaning of what we wanted, including also. By including, yes? No. No, we wanted the original one. Our original amendment we wanted, not the one rephrased. Improve the legal protection, including by introducing architectural control guidelines, which means then you, can, you should do the architecture, uh, architectural control guidelines and other measures, okay? Uh, I uh, is that clear? It's clear. <laughs> the French version is okay for that? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now it's okay. So now we proceed to the approval of the document in whole. Angola, Angola, Angola. Angola, please. Il y a un problème là, ce n'est pas clair cette phrase. Il faut, y compris en y introduisant, ce n'est pas, 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 pas bien élaboré la phrase. Là. Donc il faut qu'on la rende plus claire. Qu'est-ce qu'on veut exactement Norway. We have to uh, satisfy both languages, I mean versions. Uh, may I ask Angola to deliver the wording in French, as you think it necessary? Slowly. Slowly, to write. En fait, il faut, peut-être il faudra que la Norvège nous explique ce qu'ils veulent exactement inclure dans cette phrase. 
là on pourra peut-être aider. Norway, please, we need explanation. I'll, I'll try once more to, to make it more understandable this time. Um, I, I'm looking at the sentence in English. Improve, improve the legal protection. I mean, it could also read, include the legal protection by introducing architectural control guidelines. Yeah, and we have, and other measures. Okay, with, with these other measures, maybe we are, we should be fine. Yeah. Including by introducing architectural control and, and other measures. Does it make sense in French? Australia. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the simplest way of expressing it in English is to, be, is to delete the word including. And I think that then resolves the problem because it says both first, improve the legal protection by introducing architectural control guidelines, that's the first thing to be done, and other measures to overcome. So then we move past the architectural control guidelines onto the other things that need to be done. So I think this is the best way of expressing it in English. Now in French. Okay. okay. Merci beaucoup. Uh, now, oh, I hope the, we are finalizing with the wording. Uh, and we approaching to the approval in the of the decision in whole in a new version. Noting, sorry. A word that is too long. Bon? C'est bon. Uh, in the noting that the committee members voted and uh, they accept the decision to inscribe this site into the World Heritage List with the following recommendation, with the text which was just worked out by the common efforts of the World Committee members. Thank you very much. Now, therefore, I declare draft decision 43 com. 8B.16, approved like that. I cordially co congratulate the Indian representatives, delegation from India, for inscription of this site to the World Heritage List. And I will give the floor to you for two minutes intervention, please. Thank you, Chair, and we thank the members of the World Heritage Committee, the World Heritage Center, and the advisory bodies. The city of Jaipur today has been given the honor, the privilege, and responsibility of inscription on the list of World Heritage. It is a proud moment for a proud land and a proud people the men and women of Rajasthan. The credit is rightly theirs for having nurtured and protected this heritage for generations. They are conscious, as we all are, of the responsibility to protect and preserve, to pass on to future generations, this extraordinary, vibrant, and living heritage. To be inscribed on the list is not an award. It is not a prize. It's a shared commitment to be carried out, responsibility exercised in common cause and effort. We are all partners in this. All of us, the members of the committee, the signatories to the convention, all of the world are in this endeavor. Even as we look back to look forward, a thought or two in the future. We anticipate and await greater transparency, a sharing of perspectives and information, and to changes in process that will allow this to happen. Who will evaluate the evaluators? 
We look forward to the removal of inconsistencies, to their gentle guidance, to the highest standards of professionalism that would allow a truly great and a truly representative list. But all this in the future, not too far in the future, this evening in the streets of Jaipur, the elephants will roll, they will rumble, and they will trumpet in celebration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once more, our congratulations to India. And we are moving to the next item of our agenda. This is 8B.17, concerned with the Ombilin coal mining heritage of Sawah Lunto from Indonesia. May I ask Indian delegations to, to switch off microphone there? Thank you. And celebrations, please, outside. May I ask kindly to proceed outside, because we have to work. Uh, please, Indian delegation, can you go to celebrate outside? Thank you very much. Uh, so I would like to give the floor to Mr. Balzamo for some clarification, and then to ECOMOS to present the file, please. Thank you, Chair. We received a factual error notification concerning the evaluation of the Hombling Coal Mining Heritage of Sabalunto, uh, and this to be found on page 73 uh, of the English version of INF 8 before and on page 74 of the French version of the same document. And this notification has also impacts on the proposed statement of outstanding ourselves value that are already integrated in our uh, draft decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ECOMOS, please welcome. Thank you, Chairperson, and good morning. The ECOMOS evaluation of the Obelan coal mining heritage of Sawalunto, Indonesia, can be found in document INF 8B1 on page 133 of the English version and page 125 of the French version, and the draft decision is at 43COM 8B17. A complex industrial and social system was established in the 19th century to extract, process and transport high quality coal from a remote area of Western Sumatra. Built by the Netherlands colonial government, mining continued under Indonesian ownership until 2002. This nomination has 12 components within three main areas spanning 155 kilometers from the remote mountains to the Indian Ocean port at Padang via a purpose-built railway system. The three areas demonstrate the full extent of the coal mining and transportation system, including the housing and community facilities for the people that worked for the mining enterprise. Area A includes the mining and coal processing sites. Deep pit mining required capital investment and technological ability. The components include the pit mine sites, tunnels, ventilation system, water pumping station, power plant, and coal processing facilities. The extraction of high quality coal from the Ombolan Basin for more than a century is an exceptional example of a technologically advanced system established within the context of European colonization in Asia. Also in area A is the company town of Sao Lunto, Many buildings with the characteristic Indie style remain and are adapted to ongoing uses and community facilities. The needed labor and know-how was considerable and a mining school established in 1916 has supported the long-term capacity of the mine. At its peak, the population of the town was more than 7,000 people. All workers were housed in the town along with many community facilities. Area B is the rail route constructed from 1887 between the mining areas and the port. Several bridges exhibit technological innovation. Uh, area C is located at the port. A single component includes coal storage facilities. 
The State Party has provided additional evidence and research about the contributions of local cultural and landscape knowledge to the development of the mine. The many skilled and unskilled workers included local Menangkabau people, convict laborers, and Javanese and Chinese contract workers. ICMOS considers the social history to be a critical part of the significance of this system and has recommended continued research and interpretation of the social histories. The comparative analysis demonstrates the significance of the coal mining enterprise, particularly in the context of colonial encounters between European and Southeast Asian peoples. The nominated property demonstrates criteria two and four. The requirements for authenticity and integrity have been met. ICOMOS has been made recommendations to reduce the vulnerability of some components and to comprehensively identify attributes in order to ensure the effectiveness of protection and management. Exchanges between ICOMOS and the State Party resulted in a minor adjustment to the boundary of one of the railway stations. The single buffer zone is sufficient to protect the property, although it is comprised of a number of different legal mechanisms and could be further streamlined in the future. The main factors affecting the property are uncontrolled small-scale domestic and commercial development, particularly in Sawalunto, and deterioration of the physical fabric due to high humidity levels and vegetation growth. There is no mining within the property or its buffer zone, and none will be permitted in the future. The legal protection was improved by the State Party during the evaluation and is now fully in place. The State Party has indicated a possibility for the property be to be designated as a national strategic area following inscription, which could assist in further improving and clarifying the legal protection. The management system is adequate, although it relies on excellent coordination between different government agencies, private owners and communities across a large area of the province. To conclude, ICMOS recommends that Ombolan coal mining heritage of Sawalunto, Indonesia, be inscribed in the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria two and four, and has included a number of further recommendations in the draft decision to aid the long-term conservation of the property. Thank you very Thank much. You. Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, no one doubts that Indonesia has tremendous natural, culture, or mixed heritage, but we applaud them for to submit the first industrial heritage in this meeting. And this, this site or this nomination is showing an outstanding example of pioneering technological ensembles built by the European engineers in the globally important period of industrialization in the late 19th and 20th, early 20th centuries. The rail system devised the, to transport coal, high quality coal, from the, the remote and inaccessible region to the city. It demonstrates the exchange of a fusion between the European and the local knowledge and practice within the co context of a global ind industrialization and colonization. Finally, the Ampelium Training Education Facility fa formalized the transfer of knowledge within the colonial and post colonial context including coal mining with tropical climate. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Spain, please. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Queremos felicitar a Indonesia por esta candidatura, porque eh, no solamente está bien estructurada y los, y los eh, 12 componentes en que se dividen las tres áreas expresan el valor que tiene el bien, sino porque en una sociedad eh, o en un mundo en el que todo fluye tan rápido, en el que las nuevas tecnologías avanzan tanto y en el que parece que, que el ansia por conquistar el futuro nos lleva a olvidarnos del porqué de algunas cosas y, y, a, y a olvidar el pasado con, con cierta facilidad y cierta fluidez, Cuando se plantea un ejemplo como este, que nos permite demostrar cuál es el impacto de los cambios en las relaciones sociales productivas que se impusieron por el poder colonial europeo en las colonias, que suministraron las materias primas que a su vez permitieron la industrialización mundial en la segunda mitad del siglo XIX y XX. Es decir, está diciendo toda esta industrialización salió por algo y salió por una combinación perfecta de las tecnologías más avanzadas en aquel momento, aunque ahora nos parezcan desfasadas, respetando también el, la sabiduría medioambiental local. Fue tan importante la aportación de la comunidad local y su sabiduría de convivencia con el medio ambiente 
como la inteligencia, los ingenieros y la tecnología que había. Por tanto, hacer una parada reflexiva en, en la historia y pensar de dónde venimos y qué aportó cada uno a ese mundo industrializado queda perfectamente reflejado en esta candidatura, más allá del propio valor material que tiene. Por tanto, felicidades a Indonesia y gracias por el expediente que se ha trabajado y por el informe que ICOM nos ha hecho, porque además de darle calidad a la lista, nos ayuda a ser un poco menos adánicos y a entender muchas cosas de nuestro pasado. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Australia, please. Thank you, Chair, and thank you to Indonesia for this comprehensive serial nomination and to ICOMOS for their excellent and their professional evaluation. We have on the World Heritage List quite a number of large mining sites from, land, from Europe and from South America, so Australia was very interested to see a nomination of such a site from our close neighbour and one in a tropical environment that was established during the colonial period. The nominated series reflects a complete system from extraction and processing of coal to the housing for workers and the transportation of the coal to the port. Such a large site, especially in this tropical context, poses many uh, conservation hurdles, but the State Party seems committed to and is implementing effective and collaborative management and conservation of the property. Like our colleagues from Spain, we were particularly interested in the history of the mining community that included people who came from other parts of Indonesia, from Europe, Japan and elsewhere, who together with the local community, whose knowledge of the landscape and environment contributed to the mining operation, built a successful community. We hope that the inscription of the property will bring an opportunity for further research and interpretation of the social life of the mine, and we wholeheartedly support its inscription. Thank you very much. Uh, Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord exprimer nos remerciements pour la qualité du rapport présenté par l'organe consultatif. Et la Tunisie voudrait saluer la qualité de ce dossier et féliciter l'État parti de présenter un dossier de très grande qualité et qui, permettez-moi de faire une association avec le dossier qu'on a adopté et la résolution qu'on a prise hier concernant le, le dossier du Burkina, Voici comment la culture se fait. Elle se fait par les hommes et les femmes qui travaillent tous les jours dans notre vie euh, quotidienne. Hier, c'était les forgerons. Aujourd'hui, ce sont les mineurs. Le, le patrimoine de la mine de charbon que nous étudions aujourd'hui est un très bel exemple de la cruciale et dernière phase d'industrialisation mondiale. Euh, cela a conforté d'ailleurs la proposition d'inscription sur la base de l'article 4, mais également il faut souligner avec satisfaction la complétude de cet ensemble de manière à démontrer un système pleinement intégré en vue d'une extraction euh, optimale. Voici les deux éléments qui euh, ont permis à la proposition d'inscription qu'elle soit basée sur les critères 4 et 2. La Tunisie appuie pleinement cette décision et félicite encore une fois l'État parti de nous offrir un si beau dossier. Merci beaucoup. China, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, China commends uh, the State Party of Indonesia for this uh, uh, great, uh, very important nomination. And we appreciate this uh, uh, ICMOS for a very comprehensive and important uh, evaluation. The humbling coal mining heritage of uh, Sawa Longtu combines modern and contemporarily advanced industrial technology with Indonesia's special climatic and geographical environment, traditional practices, and wisdom. Preservation of this unique industrial heritage will inspire exhibition, protection, and management of the industrial heritage. China congratulates Indonesia on inclusion of its heritage, Omni coal mining heritage of Sawalangtu onto the World Heritage List and hope that the conservation of the heritage property will serve as an example for the best and of the best practice for, uh, from Indonesia for international peers. Thank you.
Thank you very much. May I ask honorable members of the committee, are there any other opinions or objections to the draft proposed by the uh, ECOMOS? I don't see any. Uh, may I ask the rapporteur if there are any drafts proposed additionally? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no draft amendments for this decision. So as soon as it is like that, I would like to propose to approve the proposed draft decision. And I declare the decision 43, COM 8B 17, adopted like amended. <laughs> On behalf of all the members of the committee, I would like to congratulate Indonesian delegation for this achievement and inscription of the site into uh, in the heritage list. And I will give the floor to the delegation to supply the intervention. His Excellency, Mr. Abdul Fas Garaev, Chairperson of the World Heritage Committee, distinguished delegates of the committee members, advisory bodies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the committee for its decision to, the, to inscribe the Ambilin coal mining heritage of Sawalunto to the World Heritage Police. The property is Indonesia's first industrial heritage which plays an outstanding example of pioneering technological development in the late 19th centuries. It is a fusion between the European engineering knowledge with local environmental wisdom, traditional practices, and cultural values in the coal mining activities. The property has played uh, an, an important role and contribution to the economic and social development in Sumatra Island and throughout the world, the establishment of systemic linkage of coal mining industry, train system and harbour exhibits a good example of rapid regional development on the global economic growth. It also in, illustrates the impact of profound change in social relation of production imposed by colonial powers to their colonies. The cultural interaction between Eastern and Western world has transformed the remote area into remarkable dynamic urban mining patterns, comprising modern and integrated multi-ethnic and multi-religious community. The successful nomination is resulted from an excellent collaboration between central government and local government, as well as a result of rigorous efforts among multi-stakeholders, namely research institutions, universities, and experts. I am pleased to convey to you that the Ombilin coal mining heritage of Sao Alunto is a truly significant Indonesian natural and cultural properties that is important to the Indonesian people as well as others around the world. Before I end my remark, I would like to reiterate once again our deepest appreciation for your invaluable support of Ombilin for Ombilin coal mining heritage of Sawalunto as the world heritage of UNESCO. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. And before uh, moving to the other matter, I would like to give the floor representative of the NGO from Indonesia, Wahle, I think so, is the name. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I speak on behalf of WALHI, Indonesia's largest environmental organization. We acknowledge the Indonesian government's enthusiasm for recognizing our country's rich heritage. We also share this enthusiasm. 
Indonesia has over 1,300 ethnicities and culture, many of which whose indigenous knowledge and cultural heritage exemplify OUV, as defined by the World Heritage Criteria for Selection. Indonesia also has a world site which will also qualify as iconic World Heritage Sites. Today, the Ombilin coal mine has been inscribed. The mining site is a symbol of the beginning of the destruction of nature and culture of tropical rainforest in Indonesia. It is also the start of Indonesia becoming a major source of greenhouse gas emission through coal energy. We understand that mining and coal sites have been inscribed as World Heritage Sites in the past. We also understand that sites commemorating and memorializing human conflict and tragedy is important and necessary. However, recognizing and memorializing the human suffering and environmental fallout from coal, which the world is still dealing with, is not reflected in ambulance inscription. Instead, the legacy of forced labor is sanitized. The ongoing environmental impacts and coal mining in the area are ignored. We raise this issue not to dismiss the significance of the technological cultural, but to contextualize in it in our short human history. For instance, there are still 13 mining licenses in Sawah Lunto. Local communities are still suffering. It leads to the question of how site parties should prioritize the nomination of new sites. In the Indonesian context, there are ecosystem, some with critically endangered species, in more urgent need of protection and conservation. In the future, whether the World Heritage Committee should inscribe former coal sites is a key question which should be truly discussed. Should the World Heritage Community inscribe Inscribe sites which sanitize our history in driving climate change. Thank you. Thank you. We will take it for the note. And now we are moving to the another uh, nomination uh, from Japan. Mose Furichi Coffin Group, Mount the Tombs of Ancient Japan, Draft Decision 43, Com uh, 8B.18. May I give the floor to Mr. Balsamo to brief us? Thank you, Chair. We received a factual error notification concerning uh, the evaluation of the nomination of Mozo Forigi Kofun Group mounted, mounted tombs and of ancient Japan. And this is to be found on page 83 of both the English and French version of document in fate before. This notification has also impacts on the proposed statement of OUV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now uh, the floor is going to ICOMOS to present the file. Please, you're welcome. Thank you, Chairperson. The ICOMOS evaluation of Mozu Furuichi Kofun Group, Mounded Tombs of Ancient Japan, can be found in document INF 8B1 on page 145 of the English version and page 139 of the French version. Kofun, or old mound, refers to a distinctive type of burial mound. These give Japan's Kofun period its name, spanning the third to sixth centuries. The Kofun are the richest tangible representation of the culture of this period, which was one of transition in East Asia. In Japan, changes in power relations during the Kofun period resulted in the emergence of Yamato uh, kingly power. The nominated Kofun are located on a plateau above the Osaka Plain, an important political center of the period. There are 45 components containing 49 Kofun, in two main clusters that are, represent, that are separated by approximately 10 kilometers. The nominated Kofun have been selected from 160,000 throughout Japan and re represent the middle Kofun period. The Kofun are understand to be the tombs of kings, their clans and affiliates, reflecting social and political hierarchies. The largest Kofun have a distinctive keyhole shape, Several of these are very large, close to 500 meters in length. A number are designated as Ryobo, or Imperial Mausolea, and are managed by the Japanese Imperial Household Agency. In addition to the large keyhole-shaped kofun, there are also kofun in round, scallop, and square forms. The kofun are complex earthen structures with steep sides paved with stones and surrounded by moats that are dry or filled with water. Originally, the mounds would have been exposed, but over time they were covered in vegetation. Some moats have been filled in and stabilization works have occurred at some of the mounds. 
The mounds were decorated by clay figures known as haniwa. Cylinder-shaped haniwa arranged in rows were extensively used, and there are also representations of various objects, houses, animals, and people. There are a wide range of grave goods, including weapons, armor, and ornaments. The nominated kofun occur within an area of high population. Approximately 80,000 people live within the buffer zones. Some of the nominated kofun have facilities for worship, tori gates, lanterns, stone fences, and wash basins. All kofun are considered to be places of reverence and respectful ambience, especially the ryobo. The comparative analysis demonstrates the significance of the selected kofun within the geocultural context of East Asia. The State Party has also established the rationale for the selection of the kofun of the Mozo and Furuichi groups. The serial property demonstrates criteria three and four, and given the un antiquity of the kofun and their state of conservation, the requirements for authenticity and integrity are met, despite some variations. Exchanges between ICOMOS and the State Party resulted in a minor adjustment to the buffer zone of one component. While some components are located close to urban areas, ICMOS considers the boundaries to be adequate so long as the management system operates to protect their integrity. The main factors affecting the property are associated with the close proximity of urban development and it is necessary to control erosion and vegetation on the mounds and water quality in the moats. Development pressure is managed by the local restrictions legal restrictions and heritage impact assessment has been introduced and is critically important. The legal protection and management system are therefore well established. To conclude, ICOMOS recommends that Mozo Furuichi Kofun Group, mounded tombs of ancient Japan, be inscribed in the World Heritage List on the basis of criteria three and four, and has included a number of further recommendations in the draft decision to aid the long-term conservation of the property. Please note that the text of recommendation B has been revised to remove a factual error. A draft statement of outstanding universal value has been provided. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Kuwait, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, let me take this opportunity to thank the advisory board, ICOMOS, for the great, great report. And also, I would like to thank the, the World Heritage Center and the State Party for their continuous collaboration. Uh, Muzu Furuchi Kofu Group is without questionable one of the most remarkable of all burial mounds to have been built in antiquity. It shows a wide variation of shapes, and sizes from the largest keyhole shape, as we've seen in the pictures, measuring almost 500 meter long, where the other ones goes as small as 20 meter. The complexity of the design of coffins, such as the unique keyhole and scallop shapes, where the stages of ritual, as well as burial, with numerous decorative earthenware, haniwa, place around them, and their excellent preservation and paralleled in the world. The ancient moon tombs in the Mozo Furoshi area would present considerable value for the World Heritage List. And let me add one more thing. To have them preserved for over 1,500 years in the most congested place, as we've seen in the picture, is remarkably, and we should thank the Japanese government. This is the first site listed in Osaka, surprisingly. And let me mention one more thing. It's the hometown of our dear friend, the permanent representative of Japan and UNESCO. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voudrais tout d'abord remercier ICOMOS pour, la, pour le rapport qui a été présenté, mais également l'État parti de nous avoir offert un dossier de grande qualité. Il s'agit d'un témoignage exceptionnel sur la culture de la période Kofun et bien entendu que la Tunisie rejoint le, le, le rapport et la proposition de décision en la vérification des critères 3 et 4. Je crois qu'il y a aussi lieu de, de souligner la grande qualité et le très haut niveau de l'encadrement juridique et la protection juridique mise en place par les autorités japonaises pour euh, protéger euh, ce site et l'ensemble des sites qui lui ressemblent d'ailleurs 
il y a lieu de les féliciter et bien entendu d'appuyer la décision d'inscription. Thank you very much. Zimbabwe, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Zimbabwe would like to commend the State Party of Japan for presenting Moz Furuchi Kofun Group, which is the exceptional mounted tombs in the world. By virtue of their outstanding range of size and variety of shapes, the cluster of mounted tubes represents the social political structure of the early stage of the unique civilization. We note with the admiration that these architectural monuments, Kofun, were preserved for over 1,600 years with their distinctive meanings Uh, which uh, uh, share the life and uh, spiritual value as a friend of uh, citizens. In the development crisis in the 1950s, uh, one of the components, Itasuke Kofun, was protected by the civil safeguarding campaign, and this action became the first case of citizen-led safeguarding movement in Japan. It, also, it, it is also noteworthy that uh, Kofun has successfully been preserved to this date, uh, thanks to the efforts of the citizens' initiatives. Once again, congratulations to Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Australia, please. Australia would like to congratulate Japan on the nomination of the remarkable uh, mounded tombs. This was a very detailed, comprehensive and beautifully presented nomination and it was a pleasure to read. We were fascinated by the distinctive geometric forms of the Kofun. The state of conservation and integrity of the tombs is impressive given their antiquity and their location in an urban setting, as is their sacred status and the respect they are afforded, in particular the Ryobo, the tombs of the ancestors of the imperial family. We very much look forward to seeing the results of further documentation of the intangible values of the tomb, and we encourage Japan to strengthen the involvement of local communities in the management of this property. Again, congratulations to Japan. Thank you very much. Azerbaijan, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My delegation also congratulates the State Party with this beautiful heritage and successful nomination. The Mozu Furuichi Kofun Group represent and, provo and provide an exceptional testimony to the culture of the Kofun period of Japan's ancient history. It also demonstrates an outstanding type of ancient East Asian burial, burial mound construction with its tangible attributes such as the clay sculptures, moats and geometric terraced mounds reinforced by stone. Uh, reinforced by stone. We would like to uh, commend the State Party and the ECOMOS for its uh, work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Spain, please. Sí, eh, gracias, Presidente. Eh, bueno, como el resto de las delegaciones, la verdad es que la delegación española está impresionada por el excelente trabajo que ha hecho el equipo técnico de Japón. Eh, debido a ello, le preguntamos específicamente a la delegación japonesa cuánto tiempo llevaban trabajando en esta candidatura. Y hemos podido comprobar que, claro, el tiempo es importante y es una candidatura que se nota que lleva trabajándose durante diez años y aquí están los resultados. Además, como ya han dicho también otras delegaciones, hemos quedado impresionados, como ha dicho Australia también, por el sistema de protección, teniendo en cuenta dónde está situada. Es que la foto es absolutamente representativa. Está en mitad del centro urbano y tiene un sistema de protección absolutamente increíble. En eso también hay que recordar, como ha dicho Zimbabue, que es que ya desde los años 50, cuando la ciudad estaba sometida a una presión urbanística, pues tuvo, eh, tuvo lugar la primera campaña de protección por parte de la sociedad civil. Y claro, si tenemos en cuenta que ya existió esa sensibilidad por parte de la población, de la comunidad, con este sitio, eso es fundamental, porque aquí tenemos los resultados. Así que felicidades, Japón, y nos tenemos que felicitar todos por incluir este sitio en la lista de patrimonio mundial. Gracias. Thank you very much. Uh, honorable members of the committee, uh, we had several interventions and still uh, the applies are coming. 
So uh, are there any objections or the other opinions about the uh, proposal given by ECOMOS? If there is no additional uh, information, please, I can give the floor to those who insist, but we decided to follow IPIC a little bit. Thank you very much. So uh, we now have uh, full support for the uh, proposed uh, draft. And uh, may I ask the rapporteur if there are any amendments or additions? We've received no amendments. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Therefore, uh, after listening to all the comments and information of e-commerce, I would like to declare the decision 43.8b.18 adopted as amended. We cordially congratulate delegation of Japan for the inscription of this extensional, exceptional site in the World Heritage List. And uh, I would like to give the floor to the delegation of Japan. Please, you are welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Distinguished members of the committee, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government of Japan, I would like to express my deepest appreciation to all the member states of the committee and the ECOMOS for deciding inscription of the Mozufurichi coffin group found in the tombs of ancient Japan. The property is an exceptional testimony to the coffin period's culture in the late 4th and 5th centuries, in which the socio-political structure of the time was demonstrated by the shape and the size of a coffin built as a collective entity. I wish to share this historic felicity with everybody concerned, in particular people of the Osaka region who have long cherished and maintained the inscribed properties and are committed to preserving and protecting them towards the future. Now I invite Mr. Yoshimura Governor of the Osaka Prefecture to say a few words. Governor, please. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Hirofumi Yoshimura, Governor of Osaka. I am greatly pleased that our precious histor historic heritage, Mozu Furuich Kofun Group in Osaka, has been just inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. The property has been preserved by local residents for as long as 1,600 years and handed over until today. It is not only a priceless heritage for Japanese history, but also an important treasure to convey many people's effort for protecting the Kofun to people nowadays. We will continue to make every effort together with local governments to hand over this heritage to the next generation and to offer a deep impression to visitors who come to see the site. Last but not least, I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to those who have supported us through nomination process and everyone present today. Thank you very much. We once more congratulate the delegation of Japan for inscription. May I ask you kindly switch off microphone from Japan? Thank you very much. Now we proceed to the another nomination, document 43.8b.19 from Laos, Pap Pap People, Laos Public, uh, People's Rep Democratic Republic. Megalithic jars cities in Xing Huang, plain of jars. Uh, may I give the floor to Mr. Balsamo, please? 
Thank you, Chair. We received a factual error notification concerning the evaluation of this nomination and is to be found on page 90 of the English version of document in 8B4 and on page 114 of the same document in French. And this notification has also impact on the proposed statement of OUV. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ecomos, you are welcome for presentation. Thank you, Chairperson. The ECOMOS evaluation of megalithic jar sites in Qingquang, Plain of Jars, Lao People's Democratic Republic, can be found in document INF 8B1 on page 156 of the English version and page 178 of the French version. More than 2,100 tubular shaped megalithic stone jars used for funerary pur purposes in the Iron Age give the Plain of Jars its name. This is a serial property of 15 components occurring across an area spanning 80 kilometers west to east and 40 kilometers from north to south. The 15 components include several major clusters as well as smaller sites and there are 10 buffer zones. The nominated components contain 1,325 of the large carved stone jars. The jars range in size from one to three meters, are well crafted and would have required technological skill to produce and move from the quarries to the sites where they are now found. Aside from the jars, the nominated components contain many stone discs, thought to be lids for the jars, secondary burials, grave markers, quarries, manufacturing sites, grave goods, and other archeological materials and features. In most cases, the quarries are near the jar locations. Located on hill slopes and spurs surrounding the central plateau, the jars and associated elements are the most prominent and intriguing evidence of the Iron Age civilization that made and used them. The sites are dated from between 500 BCE and 500 CE, and possibly up to as late as 800. The Plain of Jars is located at historical crossroads between two major cultural systems of Iron Age Southeast Asia. Because the area is one that facilitated movement through the region, enabling trade and cultural exchange, the distribution of the Jars sites is thought to be potentially associated with overland routes and demonstrate social hierarchies. The 15 components demonstrate the range of site types including topographic and locational contexts, stone types, density, and sizes of jars, and other archeological evidence. The selected components also ensure the protection of the substantial archeological potential of these sites. The State Party has acknowledged the need for continuing archeological research and documentation. While megalithic sites are found in many countries, in South and Southeast Asia, the comparative analysis establishes the distinctiveness of the Plain of Jars. Information provided by the State Party has also justified the selection of the 15 components. The integrity and authenticity of the property are demonstrated despite damages that have occurred in the past, including bombing during the Second Indochina War in the 1960s and 70s, looting, minor developments, and grazing. The State Party is to be commended for the work undertaken to remove sources of potential damage, including unexploded ordnance in the nominated components. ICMOS considers that Criterion 3 has been demonstrated and that the Plain of Jars exhibits an exceptional testimony to the civilization that made the jars. Little is known about these people and their specific cultural traditions. However, research collaborations are ongoing and can be expected to yield greater future insight. No major concerns have been identified for the boundaries and buffer zones to the nominated components, although several recommendations have been suggested in order to strengthen their integrity. There are a few continuing, there are few continuing threats and the protection is adequate. ICOMOS has recommended that a conservation plan be established. The present standard of interpretation is limited. The State Party is actively addressing this and a tourism management plan is to be developed. 
A considerable amount of work has been done by the State Party to establish the components of the management system. The village-based management arrangements and community engagement are strengths of this nomination. ICOMOS has recommended that a management plan be developed to guide the coordination and consistency of approaches across the property. To conclude, ICOMOS recommends that the megalithic jars sites in Qingkwang, Plain of Jars, Lao People's Democratic Republic, be inscribed on the World Heritage List on the basis of Criterion 3. A draft statement of outstanding, uh, outstanding universal value has been provided, and ICOMOS has also made a number of further recommendations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any interventions from the committee members? China, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, China uh, congratulates uh, Laos people, uh, the Laos People's Republic of uh, uh, Republic, and uh, we also uh, commend a comprehensive uh, review by the by ECOMOS. The 1,325 uh, megalithic stone jars forming the megalithic. Uh, Jar sites in uh, uh, in Xian Guan Plain of Jars and the Laos People's Republic uh, manifests the impressive achievements of ancient civilization in Southeast Asia. The traditions of, uh, to use a huge number of uh, megalithic uh, stone jars for funeral practice have similarly. Uh, similarities with the ancient Chinese terracotta figures, pottery, and the terracotta warriors. They are rich materials of, for later generations to study, uh, study the customs, history, culture, and the belief system at the time. We also note another distinct feature of the project, that is active involvement and monitoring by the local community, which greatly enhances public uh, engagement in heritage conservation, serving as an important basis for effective conservation of heritage and a sustainable development of the area where it is located. China congratulates allows on inclusion of the heritage, uh, heritage plan of uh, jars onto the World Heritage List, and I wish the State Party to enter a new stage in heritage con conservation and management. I thank you. Thank you very much. Tunisia, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. La Tunisie voudrait remercier tout d'abord les instances consultatives de nous avoir fourni un rapport précieux puisqu'il nous permet de prendre conscience de la beauté de ce dossier et des éléments qui le composent. Je voudrais à l'occasion féliciter les autorités laotiennes pour leur travail et le remarquable dossier qui nous a été présenté. Ces milliers de jars qui nous ramènent à, cette, à ces pierres mégalithiques, c'est extrêmement important et précieux à ajouter à notre liste. Et je crois qu'il y a, sur le plan de la procédure aussi, euh, une belle leçon qui, euh, qui est donnée à travers ce dossier. Il ne suffit, il, parfois, il suffit d'un seul critère, bien démontré et bien édifié, pour qu'on obtienne euh, une inscription. Je crois que est, cela est important aussi à retenir. Je renouvelle mes félicitations à l'État parti. Thank you very much. Are there any other opinions and uh, objections to the draft proposed by ECOMOS? I don't see any. May I ask rapporteur about amendments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have no amendments proposed. Thank you. So if so, uh, I would like to propose the uh, procedure of adoption of this document. I don't see any objections. Thank you very much. And therefore, I declare Decision 43, Com 8B.19, adopted as amended.
We congratulate Laos delegations and for the inscription to this list and uh, you are welcome to make a speech, please. Thank you, Excellency Mr. Chairman, Excellency Madame Rosler, Director of the World Heritage Center of UNESCO, all members of the World Heritage Committee, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great honor to be here among so many distinguished delegates representing state parties from around the world at this very important meeting. On behalf of the government of the Lao People's Democratic Republic and the Lao multi-ethnic people, particularly the provincial authority and the people of St. Kuang province, I, Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism of Lao PDR, Chairman of the National Committee for World Heritage of Laos, and Mr. Bunton Chantaporn, the governor of Sien Kuang province here presenting, would like to sincerely express our highest appreciation and acknowledgement to the UNESCO World Heritage Center and its committee members, all of you and distinguished delegates presenting here for your valuable consideration and support in inscribing the megalithic jar sites in St. Kuang province of Laos on the UNESCO World Heritage List at this remarkable 43rd session had in this very beautiful Caspian historic wallet city of Baku, World Heritage Site of the Republic of Azerbaijan. On this auspicious occasion, I would like to express my deep gratitude to the UNESCO World Heritage Center, all members of the World Heritage Committee, advisory bodies, the ECOMOS experts for precious contribution and support to the protection of this archaeological site as a common heritage of humanity. Without those support, expertise, and hard work, this inscription could not have been possible. May I take this opportunity to express my special thanks to the government of Azerbaijan for the well, very warm welcome and excellent hospitality. On this auspicious occasion, let me wish all of you a very great happiness, good health, and success in your noble task. And may I invite all of you distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, to visit our country, visit our plant of jar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We once more congratulate the delegation for the inscription. Can you switch off microphone, Lao? Switch off the microphone, please. Thank you very much. Uh, as soon as we're approaching the uh, lunchtime, uh, I think that there is no sense to start discussion of the other item. I would like to give the floor to Mrs. Rosler for some uh, announcement, and then we will proceed. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. As you know, we have from two to three the working group on the revisions of the operational guidelines, which takes place in room A7. Then there is a meeting at one o'clock, um, building peace through heritage with the life be beyond tourism movement in room B2. Then from 1.10 to 2 o'clock, World Heritage Nomination Projects in Africa by the World Heritage Center, ICROM, Tsinghua University, the Chinese National Commission for UNESCO, and the African World Heritage Fund. That's in room B3. And there's also a meeting of the members of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, OIC, in room A6. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. So we... Uh making the break for lunch, and we start at 3 o'clock with nomination of Myanmar. Uh, please note to be in time in the hall. Thank you very much. Have a nice time.